Hey guys, what's up? So, actually kind of going old school and talking about something that, you know, I haven't been talking about in a while. Politics, but also just putting my own particular spin on things and waxing philosophical as usual. So, dipping my toe back into stuff like this, well, talking about stuff like this. I'm always thinking about stuff like this. With the presidential race going on in the United States, I have to say that I'm very disappointed so far with what I'm seeing. It seems to be even more of a circus than usual. It's like every four years, it just gets more and more bombastic and more and more stupid. And this time, not only is the whole thing like a circus freak show in terms of how it's being presented, but we also have tons of candidates that... I don't even need to go into talking about them. There's already enough being said and just how poor a selection we have. It's really horrible. <laughs> really horrible. Now, granted, that horrible selection is if you're focusing on what the mainstream media is showing you. There's plenty of other candidates that will never make it on, you know, you know, on mainstream press. That might be worth looking into. Of course, there's plenty of others who are even more psychotic. But I'm pretty sure if you explore, you might actually find some people who are a bit more sane, but will not get coverage because they are sane. There is one dude that actually does have my support, though, and anybody who's been watching my channel should... Uh, they should guess already who I'm willing to back on this. And that would be Sanders. He's the only one with a track record that I like. He's the only one with a track record that actually shows a sense of ethics and morality when it comes to politics. As well as just basic common sense and not constantly licking the boots of corporate power. Just about everybody else is willing to do that. And one of the candidates is pretty much corporate power. So yeah, the selection's not that good. And it's not very surprising that the dude that I'm willing to support has had to fight every step of the way to get his campaign going. Mainstream media first wanted to ignore him, then they wanted to make fun of him, and now they kind of have no choice but to focus on him because so many people are supporting this dude because he's saying all the right things. Now, of course, some people say, well, he's just saying all the right things. He's not going to do all the right things. Yeah, that remains to be seen. We don't know, but his track record does give some good evidence to support that he's not just, you know, running his mouth. It's not just a bunch of empty promises. Now, all that being said, I'm really disappointed with his supporters. For a variety of reasons, but I'm going to get to the main one, the, the one that I feel is the most important. And it's the fact that you guys are doing the same stupid crap that I keep seeing Americans do time after time again. And it's focusing all your energies on one dude and not planning any further than that. What is it with progressive-minded people and not planning shit? What, what, what is it that, that, that just that seems to elude them? Because that's what the opposition has been doing, and they've been doing it very well. They know how to plan. Do you think Reagan getting into power in the 80s was just some freak accident? No, they know how to plan and plan well. And they planned so well that they pretty much plunged this country into a bunch of economic turmoil and um, foreign embarrassment by the end of the 80s. They know how to plan. They know how to set things in motion. So like, okay, once we get this guy in, we get these candidates in, we put this thing into motion and this deregulation act in, the, in here and that and that and that. And by this time this happens, we're going to have all this money and all these guys are going to be bought. They know what they're doing. They plan. But on the other side of the fence... We get this one guy in and yeah, 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 it's great, great. And that's all you do. You throw your support on one dude and then you think miracles are going to happen. In real life, it doesn't work that way. Bernie Sanders supporters, any of them who happen to be watching this video, 
what most of you are doing is setting up this one guy to get into the White House with no support, no government that's going to support him at all, up against a mighty machine. Realistically, how much do you think he's going to be able to do if he becomes president? Yeah, yeah, I know the polls are looking quite good if he happens to be in the Democratic ballot. You know, if you face him up against any other Republican, he pretty much wins. But you got to look past that. If you get him in. Because many things that look like sure bets in American politics many times has fallen flat in its face. you got to remember that, too. Can't put all your eggs in one basket. If he makes it there, what's he got, really, to support him? What does he have? The Democratic Party's definitely shown that they're not exactly on his side. Look how, look how much they supported him just in, you know, these um, basic primary campaigns. They've thrown more of their support behind Hillary because she can bring in those corporate dollars. Bernie's a maverick. They're not gonna, they don't want to support him. They didn't support him very at all. And it's only because of the public that he's gotten the staying power. You think they're going to continue to back him just because he happens to be president? Now, a lot of Democrats are still in bed with, you know, corporate interests. They, that's, that's a major conflict of interest for them. And I do I even need to mention what's going to happen on the Republican side? You think any of those guys are going to support him? The only support he's going to have is the people, and the people are finicky. They're fickle. They're like cats. Just, you know, dance something in front of them. They'll instantly lose whatever attention they may have had. Just like you, the ones who support Bernie, because as soon as you get them in there, that's it. Everybody go home. Everything's good. What happens if he doesn't get in? Well, it's going to be even worse, well, or pretty much amounts to the same thing. And it, it's instead... Basically, instead of you guys being happy and then going away, you're going to be dejected and then just go away and nothing happens. No plans in effect. That's what pisses me off about you guys. you got to think long term. Whether or not he gets in, the main reason why you're backing him is the issues he represents. Therefore, it's the issues that you need to support, not just the man. And you have to do some long-term planning to make sure those issues stay in the public's consciousness and stuff actually happens to address those issues. You want to do something about the fact that the 1% owns so much wealth? You need to start planning to get several people in American government to do something about it. Not just one dude or two people, because I know everyone's backing Elizabeth Warren as well. That's it, two names. You know, you need to get a lot of, you, you need to clean out Congress. What's your plan to clean out Congress? Anything? Any plans whatsoever? What are your plans to address, you know, the constant corporate corruption that we see in mainstream media? Or the fact that it's not doing its job, i.e. constantly informing a republic of what's going on, truly going on in this government. You got any plans to address that? No. Got any plans to deal with the backlash that's going to be happening you know, corporate-wise and right-wing-wise if you get Bernie and maybe a few other people like him in, into government? You got a plan to deal with that? No. This is what I mean. You have to plan. This is reminding me a lot of um, Terry Pratchett's um, book, Guards, Guards. This is one of my favorite books, where Vetinari, the city-state tyrant, pretty much, is addressing one of the other main characters and basically saying that, you know, the problem with you good guys is that you don't know how to plan. See, that's why you really need us, i.e. the bad guys. We know how to plan. We think long-term. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically what he was getting at, because I don't have the exact quotes on me, but he was basically getting at the fact that, you know, the evil guys who want to take over the world or want to screw everything over, they plan for it for a long time, and then they put that plan in action, and it works, and they hold on to power. The good guys, all they're good at is overthrowing the bad guys. And in this country, you're not even good at that. They're good at overthrowing stuff, but then later on, now you're wondering, okay, who's going to take care of um, infrastructure? Who's going to, <laughs> who's going, you know, to, to manage, you know, the everyday to day stuff? How come nobody's taking out the trash? How come the sewage is, is backed up? What are we going to be doing? Like, you don't plan for these things, and then you, you lose. That's my problem. Gotta stop throwing your weight behind just one dude. 
You can't keep looking for the great hope that's going to save you. No one's going to save you but you. And the way you do it is by planning, realistically planning, and then putting it into action and thinking long term, five years, 10 years, 20 years. That's the type of planning you need to do. It's a struggle. Struggle through it. It's not one thing and we win. Never works that way. You're lucky if it does. And the dice are not working for you right now. <laughs> the, the odds are not on your side here for just one thing helping you. One more thing, kind of like an aside to what I just said. As far as the American landscape goes politically, what I'm seeing is a whole lot of anger, both on the right and on the left, and those of us in the middle. You know, people like me who tend to piss off everybody. There's a whole lot of anger going on. But it's kind of funny where that anger is being directed. I mean, everyone knows that, yeah, government's bought, it's corrupt, corporate power runs things, banks are running things, the system is failing us. But who do you blame? One group will just simply blame government and we need to shrink it without really understanding what it is that they're asking for. Other people like, well, it's corporate power, and, and, and they're the ones. And that's a little bit closer to the mark. And it's interesting to note that the movement that actually said that was the one that got crushed. The one that was just going after government now has people in government doing things for them. That should be a clue as to what's really going on. It's interesting that, you know, for all this anger that's being directed, that means that there's a lot of dissatisfied people. The public themselves are dissatisfied because they are being screwed. Resources are being leached away from them and just being held in the hands of a few psychotic corrupt who don't seem to understand that when you don't have resources flowing through, the system breaks down. Sooner or later, something's going to cause things to erupt. But one thing I have to give the American landscape is that they're pretty damn good at dodging the bullet. They can just keep that corruption going for a long time. <laughs> It's really hilarious to me how just things keep continue to decay and decay and because of how fickle the, the public is, yeah, they're angry, but they don't organize properly and they don't really go after the right enemies, so they still end up scrambling under a fucked up system and willing to take the few breadcrumbs that crumble their way thinking that, oh, things are getting better, and, and things just continue to get worse. So you, they, they, they are really good at being placated, even with things crumbling around them, but sooner or later, something's going to break. The question is, what direction is their anger going to be going towards? And that's one of my main concerns. Because it could go in a very ugly way. For all the progressives that are mad and want change, there are also a whole lot of crazy dudes with guns who are willing and ready to go for the American Revolution. And there isn't much opposition against them. Remember the guys over in Oregon who took over that area? How long did it take before they finally moved in to grab them? And those guys were armed. Most progressives aren't. You guys hate guns. But those other dudes don't. Imagine if they finally can't take it anymore and decide to properly organize and raise havoc in this country. And that could happen because they're just as pissed off, if not more so, because they feel under siege. They're not just simply angry at the fact that certain people aren't getting equality. No, these guys feel like it's the end of America. The foreigners are coming in. The wrong people are getting the power. We're, our children are going to disappear. We need to do something. And they got very aggressive means to do it. And you got to remember something else. A lot of those guys, like for all the people who are like, let's bring Trump into this. Everyone's calling Trump a bigot. You know, Trump's an asshole. He's, he's, he's an ignorant, you know, moron. And, you know, whatever you want to say. I'm not going to disagree. But what about the crowd supporting him? It's funny that everyone talks about Trump. They don't talk about the people supporting him. How many crowds is that guy able to attract? And they live among you. And they're angry. And they're more apt to kick somebody's ass over their issues. Physically. Just ask the few people who wandered in there in the wrong time, like said the wrong thing. And got beaten the hell out of those guys are ready for war. What if things break and they're the ones who are going to be leading the surge? Imagine what's going to happen here then. This is why I say those on the progressive side, they don't, they don't fucking pay attention. They don't understand the potential pitfalls all around them. Now, they're just trying to go for one magical solution. Now, things are a lot more unstable than you think. 
a revolution in this country isn't necessarily going to lead to anything good, especially if those at the helm of it are unstable themselves. Some food for thought. Catch you guys later. Of course, now that I'm actually recording, this is when everything messes up. It's like clockwork.